recording is set, so here we go. So welcome to Connect and Create. I'm Karina Sephora, and we have the wonderful Lois Escalar with us today. And um, I'll share briefly, uh, Connect and Create began earlier this year. It was my way of um, managing my social life, really. And um, in the um, in the time of COVID, which we're still in, we all thought it would be a lot shorter. And I missed being out and about and meeting people and hearing what they were up to in their art lives. And I thought, why not create a platform so that I can share, other people can share, and we can be together. So um, Lois, I know you were the guest of Catherine Mitchell. And so I acknowledge you for reaching out and asking to be on uh, the Connect and Create show. And so thank you so much for being here. And um, I would also say a nice thank you to um, Fulton County Council for the Arts. I've received a generous grant for coming up with innovative thinking and, um, and creating a um, space and an environment for people to be creative. And, um, and I thank Fulton County Council for the Arts for the wonderful grant that I received from you. Um, Lois, anything you'd like to say before I jump into your um, bio and share a little of your professional accolades? No, go ahead. Okay, great. <laughs> So um, Lois's work, and, and I'm excited to see this presentation, you know, something that I love about artists is when they jump out and they say, I'd like to share. And so I want to acknowledge you, Lois, for being that person. Um, so Lois's work has been uh, shown in exhibitions throughout Canada and the United States. Um, her sculptures are in the Racine Art Museum, uh, the Brontman Collection, and Claridge Investments, uh, Idea Exchange Art Gallery, and the Key Corporation. In 2016, um, Esclar was selected for an interdisciplinary resident in Abroth, Scotland, wonderful, uh, called Timelines, and was selected for a Juror's Award at Design TO 2019, Timeless 2 and was accepted into the prestigious Cambridge Art Galleries. Fiberworks 2018 and Timeless 3 was shown in excellence in fibers at the San Jose Museum in California. I've been there. And Escalar's 2018 exhibitions, Remory, Rem Rememory and Specimens explored the idea of audience interaction which, which later led to the exhibition Prototypes in 2019. Escalar has received grants from the Toronto Arts Council, Canada Council, and Ontario Arts Council. In 2013, she was awarded an OAC Multi-Integrated Arts Project grant for Collected Memories, a drawing installation with a professional dancer, musician, and lighting designer. Most recently, uh, prototypes, an exploration of sound, narrative, light, and audience participation was made possible through the generous support of Canada Council's Explore and Create grant, it sounds like Connect and Create, <laughs> um, 2018, and the Ontario Arts, Council, um, Arts Council's Exhibition Assistance Grant in 2019. And currently, Lois is a member of the Redhead Gallery in Toronto, Ontario. So with that introduction, I welcome you, Lois, to our uh, our Zoom stage. And thank you once again for being here. And I, I so apologize um, about, you know, not having everything go technically as, as designed. And thank you very much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. And I also want to thank Catherine Mitchell for leading me to connect and create. Uh, we were classmates many, 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 many years ago at the Atlanta College of Art. And uh, this is the first time I've seen her on, since then. So that was pretty neat. So I'm gonna, if you could share, uh, are you ready to share your screen with me on the PowerPoint? Um, you have your PowerPoint? I have a PowerPoint, but you need to share. I have to, in order to access it, you need to allow me to access it. You need to share your screen with me. You have access to share your screen. Okay. Uh, no, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Uh, the little green button at the bottom should do it. Okay, now we got it. Okay, now I have to yeah, tell you that go. I'm gonna take my face off of here. 
Okay. Uh, because I will be reading through the presentation. Okay. So my plan today is to lead you, oops, let me just do this. Oops. I just want to turn this off, stop my video. Okay, there we go. So my plan today is to lead you through 40 years of my practice in 30 minutes, and hopefully to share my journey from there, the princesses in her fantasy garden, 1980, to here, rain gently falling, 2018. My art practice is an intuitive language encompassing vulnerability, memories, and their associations based on a variety of materials that I have collected over my career. The challenge of using these materials without losing their integrity and how the work transitions. Oops. Oops. Um, sorry. We missed a slide. Yeah, no, okay. I just gave, wanted to give you a quick view of my studio, which is on the top floor of my home in downtown Toronto. Beautiful. So I have divided this presentation into six parts. Part one, materials and collected objects, 1960s to 2020. My per current practice consists of an ongoing series of installations that document and measure the vast collection of objects I have accumulated over an, a lifetime. The work I have been creating since 2005 has focused on the idea of divesting some, if not all of these objects. Part two, sewing techniques, the challenge of learning and unlearning from 1979 to 2020. I do not have a formal background in textiles. I taught myself to sew and made non-traditional dolls for over 30 years. In the early 70s, I had three young children and was working in clay. This proved impossible to do in my home. I turned to an earlier love of mine when I was a kid, which was making puppets and putting on puppet shows. I started with nylon stocking head puppets. From there, I bought an old singer, the best purchase I ever made, and taught myself how to sort of use it. Every day I would go in and say, you will work today. <laughs> I taught myself embroidery from books. The work became increasingly more detailed and decorative. I wanted to use the female in the form of a doll and those kinds of associations to express the idea of vulnerability as a strength and not a weakness. I began to look for other ways to make dolls. So I returned to the childhood pleasure of playing, which I highly recommend. I started building structures with twigs outside like I had done as a kid. I took these fragile twig sculptures indoors when the weather turned cold and combined objects from nature with paper mache. Eventually I began to use these fragile materials with simple fabric forms. They became fetishes and voodoos, powerful magical beings who protected the female figurative forms I was making. Oops. Part three creating self-supporting fabric forms from 1985 to 1998. From there, these dolls, the doll on the left, evolved into simple figurative forms that became more like vessels. I used precious fabrics like silk and fine upholstery with added fragile materials like twigs, tea bags, Chinese soup, and the work became more abstract representations of the female form. Broken Promises on the right was the last piece in the early series of dolls. It marked a transition to the idea of using the vessel form to symbolize the female. Broken Promises used the top of one of my outdoor twig structures with a stuffed linen form that is painted with lint from the dryer. Some other influences during this time Whoops. <laughs> On the left, the burlap covered bushes found in the countryside of Ontario. I had been admiring these guardians of the fields, these protectors of emerging evergrown growth for many, many years. I discovered that burlap was a cheap, non-precious material to experiment with. 
Thus began a period of working with laminated burlap, a technique I developed and explored for over 10 years. On the right, the large, there were large textural rocks by the ocean in Massachusetts. On the left, the rocks of Arcasanti that I visited in 1987, and of course, the mysterious stones from Scotland and England. These first sculptures were small. On the left from 1987 was one of the earliest ones that I made, probably about 30 inches high. And they grew to over six feet, which would be the one on the, on the far right. Uh, I think you can see the influence in the 1988 vessels of those rocks from Arcosante, those sort of irregular forms. Part four, recycling and re revisiting. My husband and I moved into a smaller home in 1995. The burlap sculptures took up a lot of storage space. I started to make sculptures using recycled forms from earlier work. They were made in two sections or more so they could be taken apart. They also took up less room. I also experimented at that time with different forms, bowls, boxes, seeing what some of the possibilities were and then recycled them into different configurations as in this bowl form, uh, which would have been around 1992, 93, made of sections of fabric sewn together. Um, and this piece was transformed in 1998 and was actually the last burlap sculpture I made into this piece. I thought I had explored many forms, tested the possibilities and pushed the limits in the material, which is something that always interests, interests me. I was ready to move on, but I'm not sh I wasn't sure where I wanted to go. I returned to a making a series of objects that eventually turned into rattles, a series I continue to explore in which Maybe I'll show you if I have time at the end. Um, part five, installations and shadows, 1982 to 2020. On the left from there, a fairy tale, 1982. A window installation for a local store called the Apple Doll who exhibited, she, the, the woman uh, Nadine Nolan exhibited Canadian doll makers. I was interested in displaying the work as a visual story instead of individual pieces with no relation to one another. At the time, I did not think of it as an installation, but it most certainly was. On the right, which is to here, uh, in 1990 at least, Collective Memories, was a room size installation of assorted sized burlap sculptures. Another development during this time was to ask the audience to write down what the work meant to them. This was an interesting experience that I have included in numerous exhibitions where appropriate. It leaves, it leaves room for the viewer to make his or home, her own associations. The Inner Quest in 1990. This was a two person exhibition with clay artist Agnes Olive. Beside the fact that this was installed as a forest of guardians to protect Agnes's sensitive altars, it was the shadows that I took away and began to think about. Meanwhile, in 2002, I had returned to making dolls as I tried to find a new direction in my work. On Becoming, completed in 2003 and exhibited, was the last exhibition of dolls I had besides a retrospective in 2011. Um, there's also a catalog on my white website of that exhibition. Um, on the left, the scream, in the middle, the general, and on the right, On Becoming. This is a partial installation view of the exhibition. The work is composed of around 30 small hybrids. The lower half of their forms are made of plastic dinosaur bodies that I bought at Dollarama and the top are paper, paper mache. All are pregnant with expectations as they march towards the moment of becoming and then extinction. There are smaller beasties who taunt and torment the hybrids trying to prevent the transition from one state to another. Most of the works were rattles that could be shaken and declared, I am here. This became a statement and is a recurrent theme that has continued to play an important role in my, my work. Um, and is the title actually of my next exhibition in 2021. 
After this work, which was psychologically and technically challenging, I thought I was done, time to retire. After a year of not working, which was the longest I've ever gone without working, I decided to clean out my studio and get rid of my objects, which is a laugh. I took long walks, photograph marks on the street sidewalks of the city and the tar streaked streets and started to arrange my objects on the wall to have one last look before I purged. But I was hooked. Where could this lead? How could I throw out my coveted objects? So I started to research into artists who worked directly on the wall. I began to look at the work of Salouette whose large body of work I'd seen at Mass Mocha. I loved Richard Tuttle's wall and room installations and saw his work in New York and London. I have not seen Samina Mansouri's work in person, but include them as reference. These are two of my earlier explorations in 2005, which was a little sketch I made. And in 2005 was from an exhibition I was asked to be in uh, with objects from the beach, collected from the beach in Toronto. Familiar Territory One Redux in 2007. This is a wall drawing installation using photo reproduction of the tar tracks, string to frame the work, felt, an old drawing collage on the left, a picture frame or part of a picture frame, found objects and graphite directly on the wall. As in many previous works, I began to reuse materials and think about what is real and what is illusion. On the right, Vermeer Territory 2005 uses yellow rope and red plastic lights. On the left, Vermeer Territory Redux 2007 uses graphite drawing for the form that mimics both the original form and imagines a shadow. Vermeer Territory Reminiscent 2008 was part of a 30 foot installation on a wall using string found objects and a graphite drawing. The idea of the pathway is prevalent throughout as a symbol of the path we choose to take in life. This is also a recurring theme that began with my last doll exhibition on becoming and continues in my current work. Familiar territory excerpts is one of a series of work created from the stencil mask I made to trace graphite lines on the wall or packaging that I used to transport the work. I started experimenting with wire and magnets around 2009, 2010 and expanded into room size installations. On the left, familiar territory entangled 2010. Um, this is just a small portion of a room size installation and very difficult to photograph. On the right is cascade, uh, which, were, which was coated garden wire with found objects is suspended in a city uh, storefront. This is a top view of tethered memories hung low beneath the void, 2011. The wire installation was suspended from the ceiling over a large, low white platform that was 12 feet by 20 feet. So it gives you a size of the dimensions of the piece. I experimented with fake shadows juxtaposed with real shadows. And I couldn't begin to tell you which is which on this. Again, playing with the idea of what is real and what is illusion. I started reusing uh, the materials, the different wire sculptures in different places. So this was a piece called Suspended. On the left from 2012, the installation, which was made out of wire and objects, was attached to a skylight. And on the right in 2013, the same installation was installed on a wall. And on the far right, you can see a detail. Again, these the shadows play an important part of this work, um, although I didn't draw any in on these particular ones. Um, 
So I began to think about divesting between about 2014 and 2015. I felt like I needed a change. And uh, my friend Yael, who's here, told me about Hospital Field in Arbroath, Scotland. It was t yes, and it was as castle. We did work in the barns, which were pretty amazing in themselves. It was a fantastic experience. I wanted to get rid of my objects again. I was back into that divesting, getting rid of stuff and consequently mailed a shoebox full of small objects to hospital fuel and sent along some elastic cord I had lying, lying around. I thought I was gonna write and play mentally with ideas and leave the box of objects in Scotland. Instead, as I was writing about the objects I planned on throwing away, I started to think of ways I could display them on elastic cords. On the left, timelines detail some of the objects I plan to throw away that were in that box. And on the right, uh, a finished piece timelines installed on the wall is the first uh, finished piece I think that I did from that series, in that series. And this developed into a new series of work that I continue to explore. In leftovers, objects were attached to vertical elastic cords held at the top by found wire hoops. On the left were wood dinosaur pieces from Dollarama, from Dollarama, one of my favorite places. Some painted and some natural. In the middle are popsicle sticks. And on the right are ties from those burlap bushes that you saw earlier. Timelines two, three, and four, 2017, was an installation at the Gladstone, at, at the Gladstone, sorry a wonderful art involved boutique hotel in downtown Toronto. So from left to right, two, timelines two in the corner, timelines three, and on the right, timelines uh, four. It's a detail of timelines two. Uh, you can see where I've started to play with the wire in the elastic cord as well as using small objects. This is a, again, sort of a transformation using similar idea, different materials on the left from here, timelines three, 2017, um, which was on elastic cord with objects. Uh, the, the nice surprise here was the lighting. Depending on where you put the light, you would get different kinds of shadows. Some were much more rectangular than this. Some like this were a little bit rectangular, but off. Um, and I transposed this idea to working with metal rods um, and using excerpts of poetry that were, that were my own pieces of poetry um, that were suspended or were attached to the metal rods with magnets, because it's also something I was sort of playing with at the time. Um, and just another, it was a transformation basically. In 2018, I had an exhibition at the Redhead Gallery uh, called Rememory. And on the left is an, installation, is an installation view of rain gently falling. And on the right in the far corner is Timelines Poetry Excerpts. The installation was suspended between two walls with th three layers of recycled wire drawings and there were shadows both real and drawn. And if you notice on the top, you probably can see that round uh, object in there. This also was taken and uh, was a repeat of or in a recycled piece from before from the suspended series. I also began to revisit paintings and drawings in my practice. Uh, Land language in 2001 on the left were tiny threads that were uh, threaded through holes in the board interspersed throughout the painting. These were from a series of paintings made after a cross country trip through Eastern Canada. The sun caught glimpses of light and shadows on the field as we drove past them. And the drawing on the right is from 2017, has the same feeling as the painting. Both have a similar aesthetic and feed into specimens one, two, and three, a series of work I began in 2018 and that is ongoing. Specimen twos, Specimens too, uh, 
The intention of specimens was to display the objects like specimens in an insect collection to be observed and discussed. The work was designed for audience interaction, which I will explain in more detail in part six of this presentation. This was specimens three, and also far I've made three versions of this and displayed them in different places, and I have a fourth one coming up. Um, along with the work on the wall, there was a table holding folders and extra specimens. The audience was invited to buy or swap an object from the installation. Each participant was asked to provide a written explanation for the purchase or swap. In other words, aesthetic considerations, personal associations or attachments. Many objects were bought, taken and not replaced. The installation was thus transformed via manual manipulation and the observations of the audience. It's a detail. Uh, some of the objects were as they were and some have been altered. Uh, this is an example of the documentation. It was one, this is one page of descriptions of each ob object on the wall. Um, each of the three installations document the objects in a folder the audience can use as a reference to my personal memories, the entry of the objects into my collection and where possible the date they entered my life. Part six, whoops, did I miss one? Yeah. Audience interaction through movement and sound, 1980 to 219 and beyond. So in 1981 to 1986, I was making jumping jacks. I was back when I was doing fabric work, fabric dolls. And I had a great fascination with jumping jacks. I had a few that I had collected over the years that were made out of wood or paper. And I sort of started thinking, well, how could these be made out of fabric? And actually in, in research that I did found out that some of the originals were made out of fabric. So um, I could use some of the techniques that I had learned to develop different kinds of uh, jumping jacks that you could pull the cord and the arms and legs would move. So that was then, and this is now to hear, homage to Jim Dine. This was a collection of old brushes, paint brushes that I couldn't use anymore that I placed on elastic cord. They could also be pulled, they would make a sound and the brushes would move. Um, in 2004, 2013, I received a Ontario Arts Council grant that allowed me to hire a dancer, a lighting technician, and a composer. I just, uh, a dancer, in fact, you'll see the dancer shortly, um, had suggested when she'd seen some of my earlier work that it would be really interesting to have some movement, somebody moving through the forms. So it, with that in mind, I, I hired a dancer, the lighting technician, and composer. And I began to think of movement in my work. Uh, in this particular piece, there were small microphones embedded in the wire installation, and they randomly played different sounds the composer had created. This was a room size installation. This is only part of it. The dancer, Terrell McGuire, is in the installation. In 2018, with the gener generous assistance of the Canada Council Explore and Create grant, I was able to hire two computer techies and a composer to investigate and develop interactive computer generated and analog works. On the left, rain gently falling, which you had seen before, reconfigured on the right to waterfall. When I discovered I had received the Canada Council grant, I invited the team that I had hired to the gallery to see the work and brainstorm some ideas. Unfortunately, that day, the lights in the building had mysteriously gone off. Jeff, one of the team members, used his cell phone to walk close to rain gently falling and thus created a moving rhythm of shadows. Aha, I almost shouted, this is what I want to do. Waterfall, the music was programmed into tiny speakers embedded in the wires. The wires were fed into a temporary foam core box at the bottom that housed the Arduino and speaker. Electrical wires were threaded through a small hole in the wall to an outlet. I wanted the piece to seem magical, like the day Jeff had moved to cell light across rain gently falling. 
The music was activated by either personal cell phones or small LED lights that I provided. The shadows moved as the lights moved. The audience could create their own composition depending on where they directed the LED lights. Um, I have, I'm gonna show you just a very sh short portion of a video uh, documenting this process of creating um, waterfall. Uh, the sound quality is not that great in parts of it, so I'm going to stop it uh, sort of in the middle. So my most recent work, um, where I'm using the elastic cord, is from 2019-2020. It's an ongoing, it's actually the first in a series called Lies. This one is called Lies My Teacher Told Me. This work takes me full circle from my determination to master embroidery techniques in the early 1980s and all the dictums from childhood about the right way to do something. And lies, objects are suspended on elastic cord to create a metaphorical timeline. Like the kipu, knotted strings used by the Incas, lies uses knots, irregular bumps in the cord and objects to keep a record of information related to daily life. We are told many stories in our lifetime. They shape our perception of right and wrong. The knots, stitches, and references to the written word hopefully challenge the audience to question the isms, the how-tos, and the correct ways, in other words, the rules we are taught that can inhibit and restrict us. It has taken years to break free from this dictates and rediscover the childlike rapture of play. The end. <laughs> I do have a picture of the rattles that are gonna be in my exhibition and I'm just wondering if you'd like to see those as well. I just have one more image. Should I go ahead and show that? Yeah, go for it, go for okay. it. It's just very different than the rest of the work that's, or from the, that work. So this is uh, some of, these are some of the rattles which can all be held. Um, and it was nice to get back to making objects again. I haven't been making objects for a while. So it was a nice exploration. And that is it. So I will stop the share now and I'll get back to myself. There. Oh, I'm getting so proficient at this. <laughs> Great job, Lois. That was wonderful. And what a Thank beautiful you. surprise. Um, it's rare that I have a, a guest on the show that I'm not familiar with their work ahead of time. Yeah. So um, this was a real treat for me also to be able to see, um, you know, to have my eyes open to a brand new um, artist in my uh you know, repertoire of people that I know personally. Great. And I love that you brought a wonderful audience with you. Great.
Yep. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so um, thank you, everyone, for joining. And um, as I mentioned, we started uh, about 10 minutes late, and I have some space to stay on a little longer so that we can answer some questions. And um, the floor is open. If you'd like to um, you know, raise your electronic hand or put a message in the chat, um, I, I can call on you. It looks like Catherine's off of you. Catherine, did you want to share something? Uh, I was just going to say how exciting it was to see that transition from art school days. Uh, and, you know, so many people go to art school and they never really make art again, which is very unfortunate. So it's obviously been a really wonderful life and lots of variation and evolution in it. I like your brand new pieces, too. Those are, are wonderful. Thank you. Fabulous. Anyone else? Let's see. I, I see a couple. Any anyone? Um, and if, if you know how to raise your hand, that that's helpful um, just to manage so we don't talk over each other. Um, or I see a couple questions in the chat. Hold on. It's great to see you from Kim. Um, Kim Lee Ko. Um, Lois, great to see the trajectory of your work over the years. Um, from Lima, Lena, uh, love your work, wondering how you pack them. So there's a question in that. <laughs> uh, very easily, the, the wire work and the elastic cord work, I just attach to foam core boards. That's it. <laughs> easy. The other work wasn't so easy to do like any of the things that had very fragile materials in it, the earlier work, um, any of the fabric work that would have been harder to package. I'm, I like to package too. So I like to discover ways of doing it number one cheaply because I'm cheap that way. <laughs> and, um, and, and packaging can be very expensive. So I've, I, that's one of the things that I like to do is how to package things. In fact, I had, uh, with a friend, we were talking about curating a, an exhibition and we had actually chosen an artist called The Art of Packing. Uh, how people use packing in their art or how they package things. I love that. And yeah. Lois, I should, I'd love to share with you, um, many years ago, I was involved with a show at the University of Wyoming that a, a friend of mine, um, husband and wife that are professors there, they put together and this exhibition all of the artwork had to fit in a particular size and shape envelope. And, and there was a clever name for it too, but it, you know, different maybe than what you're talking about. But, you know, it, it was really interesting because oftentimes in an exhibition, you know, you have this really large expansive work, you've got smaller work, it's all like that. And everything that was in this exhibition had to fit into a particular sized envelope, like a kind of like a manila envelope uh, mailer. Uh, yeah, I actually was in something like that. It was in Newfoundland a number of years ago, and I asked someone to help me with it. They had a very small, it had to be 19 inches by, I don't know, six or seven inches, had to fit into some kind of an envelope. But what I did is I designed an elastic cord piece that all fit into that, but then when it expanded and they put it on the wall, it was over six feet uh, wide and tall. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. they're parameters, but different. It was fun. It was challenging. Wonderful. Yeah. Let's see. People are really using this chat. Let's see. Um, we've got another question, Lois, from Kim Lee. Um, Kim Lee Co. And she's personally interested in the sensor work. And, you know, how did you learn about the sensors is the question inside of that interest. Oh, that was through the grant that I received. Um, I had worked uh, on that earlier piece, Collected Memories from 2014, and it just sort of got a taste of it. The, the guy I worked with wasn't really a computer expert. He was, he was more of a musician. And in the second work, that I, the, the Canada Council grant, it was, um, I was interested in, exp in taking that idea further. Uh, and exploring more of that interactive quality. And in that particular piece, which was great, you really didn't touch the work. As you could probably see in the, the, the uh, movie, the documentation, it was all controlled by all, uh, where somebody placed the lights mm -hmm. and how far away from it they were and how close. That was the technical expertise of these two guys that I hired. And then the music was composed by the composer that I hired. 
So he had programmed different pieces of music in, in the different sensors that were located on there. So I know nothing about that. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> These so guys put it together. <laughs> and, and, and you open up a, a great conversation with that, Lois, which is the art of collaboration, right? Yes. How often do we as an artist have an idea and it's bigger than ourselves, and yet sometimes we're stopped by you know, not reaching out to other people. So I acknowledge you for, you know, reaching out and having this grant, first of all, and which we all know, those of you who have written grants, what it, what that takes. And then also to um, be able to reach out to other creative individuals in order to have a bigger vision come to fruition. So, um, so wonderful. Let's see, we've got another comment from Roxanne Halasi. Roxy will be a, a guest on Connect and Create um, coming up in the next, um, short little while. And um, she's also a recipient of the grant that is um, part of what puts this together. So I can't wait to see what she has to share. And then we've got another I'll person. say a quick hi. No, you're hi. <laughs> hi, Roxy. What's the date that you're coming on? I don't know. We haven't decided. Oh, we haven't decided. Okay. No, you haven't sent me the information yet. Oh, okay. My assistant Iris usually sends that out. And I, I think she's probably, you know, busy with the holidays. I'll, but, yeah, yeah, I'll look for it and see okay, if it good. maybe it'll is in my spam or something. So yeah, it might, it'll come from Iris Pool. I think she may have just sent it. Okay, okay great. So we're looking forward to you being here. And um, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And did you have any other questions while you're off mute or comments for Lois? No, really, it was just lovely. I mean, I love the way that um, I'm really interested in, in line in all different forms. I use, um, you know, I use a lot of sewing in my work and a lot of different forms of line and also repurposed wires. And so I like how you have taken that to a completely, you know, uh, large vocabulary on the walls. It, it's, it's very beautiful. Thank you. Great. Let's see, we've got, we've got a really active chat. I love this. Okay, let's see. And then come from Carol Kurt. Thank you, Roxy. From Carol Kurt, let's see, she's known you since 1983. 63. Oh, 63. We were roommates at Washington University. Well, <laughs> there you go. My mom was at Washington University, actually. Oh. Yeah. What was her name? <laughs> <laughs> Same time? Yeah, around that time, yeah. Uh, what was her name? Elaine Sutton. She no. was a troublemaker. Girl? <laughs> she was in Eastern philosophy. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's see. Um, and she I just want to say hello. This was terrific, Lois. Hey, Carol. Hello. Great to see you. <laughs> From 1963 all the way on to see how much you've grown and the work has changed and evolved and such an interesting body of work. Thank you very much. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry, Karina. I had to do that. No, no, it was perfect. It's perfect. You all are so well behaved behaved with your chat. Usually people are sort of like taking themselves off mute and shouting things out. No, not usually, but occasionally. So you have a lot of fans here, Lois. And then it looks like we have one more comment. What a wonderful, anything else you wanted to share, Carol? No, oh, I, I just, I have some of Lois's work, right, oh. surrounding me as we speak. And I, I really find it both stimulating and comforting. And I can't explain why it's both, but it is. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I just feel very fortunate to have had Lois as a friend and as an artist, both. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it, great. Thank you very much, Carol. Um, and then let's see from um, David Shatsky. Shatsky? Shatsky. Shatsky, thank you. Uh, what a wonderful retrospective um, without an ending. I love that, right? Continuing. And since this is being recorded, I wonder if I can access to have access to it. Um, let's see, the quickest, easiest, if you go to my Facebook page, um, Karina Sephora, um, you'll be able to see it's a live recording and then Lois will send you the recording as well. Um, I, I, you could uh, send us, the best way is really to send an email to karinasephora.com if you really want your own personal copy. Um, and we'll see if we can get that sent out. And then who is the composer was our, is our final question that I see here in the chat. In the chat. Yeah, I know, Anne, it was Joseph uh, Murray. I can give you his information. Hello, Eloise. 
Thank you very much for that information. I thought it was a really great piece. I was very amazed by all that work. Thank you. I'm hoping it completed. There was another piece as well, which I didn't show because it didn't really relate to the lines and all that kind of stuff. But there's uh -huh. one that that I want to continue. We'll see. <laughs> Yeah, I think I, I I had no idea you you had done some um, electronics and and sound and stuff like that. Yeah, you may have been away when I showed that. It was at Loop, two thousand and nineteen. Mm. Okay, okay. I have a question for you. Have you ever considered in the path of Soliwit to uh, send your work um, everywhere on the planet, even on Mars, to and with instructions with people with their own a local material to uh, fiddle something that would be your work, but with their material and their input? I'm not sure if I understand what you're saying. Um, okay, Soliwit is giving instruction to the, oh, right. the yeah. museum installers to do you know this line from that corner to that corner, blah, 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 and it ends up with a design that he's um, um, Created. thought of. Yeah. You can, you, in the, in just with the principle of sending instruction abroad. Done, I do with, that because ah. with any of the, um, what, the wire installations or the elastic cord for, in particular, that piece I sent to um, Newfoundland several years ago, that had very detailed instructions. Um, and some, sometimes I, I'm surprised that people can follow my instructions. <laughs> but yeah, no, and that was definitely inspired by Louette because he definitely did that with his, he would send his work all over and then people would be able to install it from his instructions. I, li I like that idea. And it also lets helps you to let go of control of exactly how it might turn out. Because, you know, yeah. there could be variations on it, right? So where, so where can we see that work that's been done remotely? Oh, that would be, unfortunately, I can show you a picture. I can send you a picture of it. There was, it was a corner piece and I did it with a friend. It was right after I had a hip operation. <laughs> so I had somebody help me put it together basically. And, um, and then we, uh, then I sent it off. But I, the picture, unfortunately, is very, this work is very difficult to photograph. Um, and I didn't have that photograph professionally. Uh, I did send it off. In the gallery, it was in the the rooms in Newfoundland at St. John's, and at St. John, I mean, and they um, it, it just didn't get photographed well, so it's just not. I can send you the picture though for sure. Well, it's it's very much for the the process, the concept, and then I can imagine that it's always changing because the light would change if you have people walking around with different lighting device. Oh, that particular, yeah, that for sure. The one that I, the la very last one that I showed, yeah, that's a different piece. That definitely changes. And also it needs work. It's not, I mean, the, the, the Canada Council grant was a create and explore, or explore and create. And the idea was, and, then, and the great thing about that grant is that you don't really have to have an exhibition it's really for the purposes of discovery. So mm -hmm. the, none of those pieces were really, really part of showing them. And, and I only showed them for a brief time was to get uh, to test them out, to see how they worked. And for sure that piece that I showed and, and another piece that I didn't show need to be shown in their own space because there's too much interference from outside noise um, there was light that was an issue that I wouldn't have known and we wouldn't have known until we actually did it. Uh, one day I walked into that gallery space and the lights were on because the lights needed to be dim for it. And the, and the recording was just going on its own, <laughs> which was not what I wanted. <laughs> well, it's so, hard to have control from far away. <laughs> it's very, no, that was here. So that's hard, it's hard to, what I'm saying is with any of those electronic kind of things or you know computer oriented things, and I've talked to many people who are a lot more experienced with it than I am, they said there's always a problem. There's always a technical problem <laughs> that you need to work through. So that's so what it was. The, 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 piece that was. the piece that you sent abroad with instruction was not an electronic no, uh, no. piece. It was just like a uh, flat visual. Just, it was, just a, it was a, uh, a corner piece. Um, 
that was suspended from two walls. So it was it was an elastic cord piece, and it had. I'll send it to you. I'll show you. You'll so you'll see. It was a box. It was called the the exhibition was called boxed in, and all the boxes had to be under a certain size. So within this um, elastic cord installation, there was a box that was created through the um, through the elastic cords in the way that they were designed to be strung. And uh, they had like little um, shish kebab sticks that were painted. So it formed a box that was approximately eight, 19 inches by seven inches or something like that. I don't remember what the dimensions were, but it was definitely a challenge. <laughs> I'd like to see that. I Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Work. Thank you. And, and, and it was fun to put it together. Not, not to quit when you thought you would give away all your your. I know. <laughs> I'm still in that process of getting rid of. Purging can be a good purging can be a good motor for creating. You're right. Well, you know. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Anne is a fabulous artist. Thank you. And Montreal. Thanks, Anne. I love it. Today we've gone international. That was a topic of conversation in last week's conversation. We have a someone who oftentimes tunes in from Poland. And um, and so the conversation was very much about Atlanta and the Atlanta art scene and how things have shifted um, you know, through COVID. And so it was really wonderful. Last, last week we had a conversation where we kind of realized that we were going international with this conversation. We think that we're operating locally, but one of the beauties of, um, of our Zoom and our Facebook communities are being able to be so national and international. So I love hearing the accents and I love that we have people coming all the way from Canada. I have some friends in Toronto and um, I've been to Canada, but the only place I've been to Canada as a visiting artist is um, in the middle of the country in, uh, it was many years ago, where was it? It was. Um, it's in the Plains area. Um, Saskatchewan? Saskatchewan is Saskatoon, to be precise, yes. <laughs> outside of Saskatchewan. And so that was a lot of fun. So, um, well, listen, do we have any other questions or comments or conversations from anyone in our Zoom audience? Uh, love to hear from you. And if not, then we'll, uh, we'll give Lois her last words. Uh, well, was oh, just, also, uh, a few people were asking about staying in touch. Hello. Oh, one yeah. second. And hey, so I just want to let Daddy. you know the person. <laughs> oh my God, I know you. <laughs> is that Duncan? Yeah, it is. <laughs> huh? oh, Long time. <laughs> I just wanted to say how wonderful I thought it all was, your presentation. And, and it was great to see the stuff uh, that you put in the Visual Arts Center so many years ago. And it all sort of came back to me, those, those um, abstracted female forms and, and, uh, and then getting to know you through the Redhead Gallery has just been marvelous. Yeah, same. Really looking forward to seeing your new stuff. And Thanks. I think we should work together sometime. <laughs> if we ever can see each other. <laughs> yeah, really, oh my God. Yeah. Oh, this is great, thanks. Thank you, it was a lot of fun to put it together. I enjoy doing that kind of thing. Yeah. The reading is not so great, but it's, but it was fine. Yeah. <laughs> you had a lot of detail. It all, it all came across really well. Yeah. Good. All Thanks. right. <laughs> Take care. Well, Bye. Okay. Good to see you again. And I look forward to hearing more from you as time goes on. Well, Same, Catherine. I really, I appreciate your leading me to this. And I also appreciate different um, people that you had, I haven't done anything about, but <laughs> that you had put me on to. That's great. Thanks. Great. Well, yes, Catherine, thank you so much. And, um, and uh, it was so wonderful to be able to um, have you, uh, Lois, uh, join us after seeing Catherine's um, show. And it feels like there's a reunion that's happening that goes all the way back to the 60s. Yeah. Uh, Oops. Frozen again. Uh, and I, I really acknowledge each and every one of you for being here and staying with us. Did I, did I stop a minute? My internet's been a little funny today too. 
Um, and somebody was asking uh, about um, uh, staying in touch and receiving recordings in the chat. I put both my email and I put the link on the website. Um, feel free to go to that link if you want to receive the newsletter, the weekly newsletter that always um, posts who the next upcoming speaker is. And um, once again, I really thank each and every one of you for being here. And the biggest um, thank you, of course, goes to Lois. Lois, uh, thank you so much for being here. And um, I hope you come back next week. We have a, a musical artist who will be, who I met at the Hambridge Art Center, um, who's a professor. And so I'm really looking forward to um, that conversation. And Lois, um, I'd like to give you the last word Anything you'd like to share with our, um, our national and international audiences today? Well, most of these internationals are from Canada, where I am, <laughs> right? These are mostly people I know. <laughs> so thanks, everybody, for joining. They're on the site as well. But uh, I would say the international part is all from Toronto. Thanks, guys. <laughs> and, I, and I do really appreciate it. It's always fun to put together something. And, test out what I can do and what I can't do. It was a lot of information in a very short period of time. <laughs> yes. So thanks for bearing with it. Yes, definitely. Well, thank you everyone for being here. Um, come back next week. Um, and uh, I look forward to um, hearing from uh, any of you that have a conversation that you would like to share as well. So thank you all for being here and especially Lois, thank you for being here and thank you for your patience. I apologize about any stress that may have caused you at the beginning. <laughs> and um, everyone, I just really appreciate your presence and I, I love being able to create a platform for people to be able to share who they are as an artist and for other people to connect, even all the way back to the 60s. <laughs> and thanks again to the Fulton County Council for the Arts for your generous funding and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.